Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Happy spring. Spring is in the air. We're here to see it. So for today's video, we're going to be going over some questions that I get asked quite frequently that cover anything to do with air traffic control. So in one of my prior videos, you can go and check it out right here. We went over some of the ATC basics. So how to go about and talk to air traffic control, how to get a clearance, but I had a lot more questions to kind of dive a little bit deeper. So what I did is I asked this question on my discord as well as my Instagram as to what would people want to see or what questions people have for air traffic control. So this video, we're going to be covering all that together. Thank you so much to everybody who has joined my YouTube membership. It's just another way for you to support me. If you're looking for ways to do so, go ahead, click the link in the description below to go ahead and do that. Thank you so much to everybody who's joined. I know it's annoying, but please subscribe to the channel. If you're enjoying the content that I'm doing, it really, really helps the magical YouTube algorithm. So thank you so much everybody who's already subscribed and to those who are now subscribed. Make sure to stick around all the way to the end because I do go over a short form example. So I do go over how to write down an ATC clearance. So an IFR clearance, as well as a taxi clearance in a short format, which is one of the main questions that I get. So make sure you stick around to the end to see how I do that. All right, let's get started. So I've got my trusty notebook full of my questions here. So first question, does ATC get mad if we ask them to repeat themselves because we're not used to radio calls yet? And I had a lot, a lot of questions about air traffic control getting upset or getting mad at you. And the answer is if they're good air traffic control. They will not get upset. If there is any confusion or if there's a misunderstanding with a clearance or a restriction that you've received, you're absolutely allowed. And it's of course highly recommended that you ask them back for clarification. So we would never want to be in a situation where we are unsure about what we're supposed to do and then get ourselves into an unsafe situation. So you're much rather to ask and get clarification from the air traffic controller to ensure that you're doing the right thing. If they sound like they're upset or if they sound like they're angry with you, just don't take it personally. They're stressed, they're busy, they're trying to do their job as safely as possible. So don't take it personally that they may be short or respond to you quickly. They're just trying to get you where you need to be. So absolutely feel free to get them to repeat themselves or ask the question again, if you're unsure. Next question. So what are some tips for handling busy air traffic control airspace? and environment. And I think this is going to be very situational. So depending on where you are, some airspaces or control zones can be quite busy. And your best bet is to sort of create a plan. So what I mean by that is having an idea of what the next step would be for you. So I'll give an example. Let's just say you're trying to come into a control zone and you need to have established two way radio communications before you can enter. Make sure that you know that as you get to a certain point where you're not, not able to enter, you will have an exit plan to be able to not clear into or not enter into that control zone without having that two way communication. So make sure that you know where you're navigating to and have an exit plan to move perhaps sideways so that you're not entering their control zone prior to having established that communication. Another example could be, let's just say you're on the ground and you are waiting for a taxi clearance and it's incredibly busy. Just bide your time and be patient prior to being able to get your clearance and try to get in and memorize essentially the call that you want to do so that you're efficient once you get onto the actual frequency. What is flow and why is it always in a Vancouver International Airport? And this is a great question. So flow is a way essentially to mitigate the traffic patterns and the traffic volume that certain airports get at certain times. So Vancouver is a great example because it's an international airport that gets tremendous volumes at specific peak times. So what Vancouver airspace will do is that they'll actually limit the amount of aircraft that can come in to the airspace as to not overload the airspace and the controllers with too much traffic and too much volume that they can't handle or would be unsafe to handle. So a flow time would be a specific departure time that you are limited to, to prevent you from departing too early so as to not crowd the airspace um, too, too busy ahead of time. And typically those that are most impacted by flow will be the ones that are most 
close or closest to the airport as they have more flexibility as to when they can you know depart or delay their departure time whereas the ones that are coming from overseas they're coming inbound <laughs> there's not much you can do with it so from my experience it's typically the regional the regional people that get impacted most from flow but out of your control so you just do your best to, to be patient while while you wait for it what is a call sign versus an aircraft registration so a call sign would be the actual air traffic control assigned call sign for your radio communications whereas the aircraft registration is the numbering or the lettering system that you see typically close to the tail of an aircraft so the aircraft registration is the registered lettering to identify the aircraft as per the government body or you know based on the regulations that you have uh, in your environment whereas the call sign will be what you hear on the frequency after landing at an airport with a ground frequency, do you stay on tower until they tell you otherwise, or is it okay to switch to the ground frequency? Great question. And this is going to be again, depending on the scenario. So if for example, you've exited the runway and you're onto a taxiway with that, the air traffic control had cleared you to, to exit and they're really, really busy and they haven't gotten to you yet at that point, once you've cleared the you know, the, the exit line from the runway and you're onto the taxiway, it would be then safe to switch over to the ground frequency, especially if it's been a little bit of time. Typically it's quite quick that the tower frequency will tell you to switch over to the ground. So if you haven't heard from them in a little bit, it's safer to switch over to the ground frequency as it's better off to leave the tower available for the movement that's on the runway and in the surrounding airspace. Who is the best ATC in Canada? So I have a bit of a soft spot for, of course, my Calgary Tower. Shout out to Andrew and Nick in the Calgary Tower. Um, but of course, this is going to depend on where you are in Canada. I just have a soft spot for where I am currently. This next question, I feel like is going to be again, dependent on the area that you're flying in. But the question essentially covers, if you're in your own country, can you speak your local, local language for ATC? So the international rules are to have English as the spoken language for air traffic communications. But of course there are some variations for this. So as a perfect example, when we fly in portions of Eastern Canada, there are lots of controllers who will communicate in French with other French speakers speaking pilots to just keep it fluid and keep it consistent. And they will revert to English when there is an English speaking pilot that comes onto the frequency. So again, this is going to be dependent on the area that you're in, especially for perhaps smaller airports or local airports, but just always double check what the regulations are to make sure that you're doing things how you're supposed to. Next question. So how do I request a stop and go landing or any other different type of landing that the tower perhaps didn't clear you for you would get onto the frequency and let's just say you're doing a circuit pattern and you're coming into land and ATC has cleared you for a full stop landing runway two six in the event that you would want it to do a full stop and go for another takeoff as you're doing more circuits you can just say um Calgary Tower it's Sierra Charlie a Romeo requesting stop and go landing runway two six. So that would be just an example to request that stop and go. And then they would clear you for that stop and go landing as long as they can, you know, manage it with the traffic patterns and the volume that they're dealing with. So what are some things that annoy air traffic control? Now I'm not an air traffic controller, so I can't speak on their behalf, but one thing I would think would annoy them from my perspective would be if you're kind of talking back at them. So if you're being disrespectful or if you're being kind of sassy when it's unwarranted, I feel like that would be a perfect setup to kind of annoy someone who's just trying to do their job. You know, just making sure that you are always being respectful. They're there for your safety. They're there to ensure safe, a safe environment for everybody that is on the ground or airborne that they're responsible for. So as long as you're treating them with respect, I feel like that's one of the best ways that you can go about to not annoy air traffic control. Next question, how informal is a conversation allowed to get on air traffic control or on the frequency? And this is a bit of a, an opinion, I guess, but most of the time, depending on, you know, how busy an air traffic controller is, there will be a little bit of banter, a little bit of back and forth, again, depending on what the situation is, or if you're, you know, asking questions or how their day is going. But typically anytime that you're hearing that it's quite busy, we really want to make sure that we're very efficient with our radio calls and we're not wasting anybody's time as someone might want to be coming in to, 
make their own you know call and they might not be able to chime in if we're just having a back and forth and full conversation so we want to essentially limit our conversations to what is most necessary Great question for my training pilots out there or anybody who's on flight sim who wants to get onto pilot edge or a VAT sim. What do I need to know regarding air traffic control as a training pilot? And I think the best thing, and I did cover this in my first video, is to understand and know that you're going to make mistakes. And that is totally okay. Just remember that you're just trying to have a back and forth to keep things safe. What are you trying to do? Where are you? And what is the clearance that you're looking for is really at the end of the day what we're wanting so as long as you are keeping it in the back of your mind that you're going to make mistakes and that is okay that everybody makes mistakes just know that you're going to continuously learn and improve as you go and your calls will improve as you keep practicing so just keep that in the back of your mind and you're going to do great Another good question. So how are waypoints or routes determined? So again, this is going to be another question where it's going to really depend on the environment that you're in. So as an example, if you're a student that's practicing your cross countries and your navigation, you're going to be the one that's establishing the route and, you know, going to from one waypoint to the next based on the airways and the air spaces that you're crossing. So you're going to be the one that's going to be creating that route based on, you know, the most common flight paths or perhaps in Canada based on the CFS. So the flight supplement. Now, if you're dealing more so in an IFR environment or maybe at the airline level, we actually have, as far as pilots, we don't have say specifically as to what the route or the waypoints are going to look like. This is all done from the flight planning perspective to keep an overview and make sure that all the same IFR traffic uh, patterns are going in the same general direction to keep things quite fluid and to make things easier for air traffic control. So we're a little bit removed from that that decision making of course if there's something that you want to, to change or you had some you know insight as to what was going to be happening with the weather and you wanted to modify things of course you're going to be the PIC at the end of the day and you can have that input and modify things with your dispatcher Another question that I had, and this was in my Discord, it was asking me to cover the differences between clearances. So we had an instance where there was a difference between having the words at your discretion versus having the entire clearance at that instance. And something to remember is a word like at your discretion means that it's at your decision. So you might be cleared, you know, Sierra Charlie Romeo cleared to 9,000 feet, your discretion, meaning you're cleared down to descend to 9,000 feet, but at your choice. So perhaps you're waiting for your VNAV to get enacted and then you can start your descent versus having a call like Sierra Charlie Romeo descend 9,000 feet would be at that moment, they're expecting you to start the descent to 9,000 feet. So making sure that you're listening to those slight differences as they do make a difference for the clearance that you were given. All right, and here is the last question before we move on to my air traffic control shorthand example. Does ATC laugh at us when we mess up on the radios? So I'm gonna go ahead and take the route of, I hope they laugh at us because you can absolutely take your job seriously and you can absolutely be a professional and you can still have fun with it and not take it so personally if you screw up on the radios. I've made mistakes my entire career and I still do and I'm sure that they've laughed at me multiple times and I've laughed at air traffic control when they've made funny mistakes on the radios as well. Once you screw up you just get yourself back up, you just brush it off, you try again and you move on with your day. It's really not that big of a deal. So really I hope I can make someone laugh when I screw up on the radio. All right, let's now move on to the shorthand example as to how to write down an air traffic control clearance. So in this first example, I'm gonna be going over the air traffic control IFR clearance that I received for the flight that was Encore 3100, where we're going from Fort St. John to Calgary Airport. And if you wanna go and reference the flight, you can go ahead and follow along and practice with me. Encore 3100, Fort St. John Radio, 121 decimal line clear. Go ahead for clearance, Encore 3100. ATC clears Encore 3100 to the Calgary Airport via Fort St. John, direct roll out flight plan route, climb flight level 250, depart runway 21 and squawk 406. So in this example, ATC cleared us as a flight 
uh, 3100 to the Calgary airport via Fort St. John, direct to Rolla, which was our first waypoint on our flight plan. Then the flight plan, so I just put FP, which is the flight plan that we had filed, up to flight level 250, departing runway 21, and then squawking, which is our transponder code, 4606. And then to read it back, you're just going to go from top to bottom. So Encore 3100, clear to the Calgary airport via Fort St. John, direct Rolla, flight plan route, a climb up to flight level 250, depart runway 21, squawking 4606. So it's really easy to just read it right back. All right, so this following example is a taxi example from a clearance that I received. It's from my flying video uh, again, from the 3100 flight from Calgary to Fort St. John once we landed in Calgary. Number 3100, change the exit, exit Charlie 2, please. And at the exit, hold short of Charlie, ground there 1219. So here again, I just have my flight number. Always keep this nice and handy because we do multiple flights in the day. And then the clearance was to go on to Charlie 2 and to hold short of Charlie. This is how I indicate to myself and to my captain that we're gonna be holding short of the taxiway. And then reading it back, Charlie 2, holding short Charlie. Now let's listen to the upcoming following clearance that I received from the ground controller. So far, 3100, ground taxi, Charlie, cross runway 29, take kilo to the apron. So in this follow-up uh, example, as we continue to taxi off and we were holding short Charlie, I advised the air traffic controller that I was holding short Charlie, and he then cleared me to get onto taxiway Charlie, cross runway 29, taxi kilo to the apron. So in this instance, I've indicated to myself with an X that I'm actually crossing the runway and I only will see an X with a number, meaning to cross that runway. And then again, reading it back nice and simple. So Charlie cross two nine kilo to the apron. Now go ahead and try it out. Listen to my video and see if you can use the same shorthand to be able to practice for yourself. All right, everybody, I hope I gave you some new tips and some tricks to write down your ATC short form. I hope I answered your ATC questions. Let me know if you have any more in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon.